So Samsung did also announce a budget Galaxy Book, just the base Galaxy Book at this event. This is only available in the 15 inch version and isn't quite as powerful or as good as the Pros in many ways. So starting off with the display, it's not an eye care display anymore, it's just a regular display. I don't think it's AMOLED either, I think it's just a regular LCD display. So that is a really significant drop. However, not many laptops are OLED, so I mean, yes, it's bad compared to the Galaxy Book Pros, but as an overall display, it's, I guess, still a good display. It's still got Dolby Atmos support, which, I mean, personally, I love speakers. I'm not an audiophile, but I need to have good speakers on a laptop. The ones on this are pretty bad, which is why it's always Bluetooth. It's great to see that Dolby Atmos is being offered on this budget version. It also doesn't come with 5G, but LTE. I mean, it's still an LTE laptop. Not many laptops are LTE, so it's still nice to have that. And, you know, 5G isn't really a thing all around the world. Samsung also claims significantly less battery life on the Galaxy Book. They say only 10.9 hours and there's nothing about insane charging speeds or anything like that, so just 10.9 hours, that's all they say. However, this is where things get a bit better. So the Galaxy Book does actually offer a second SSD slot. You can get up to 512 gigs of internal storage, but then they also have an expandable SSD slot where you can add another terabyte of storage. Like, wow, that's a lot. Plus, it also has a micro SD card slot, so if you want to add any storage there too, then this thing's packed. It does have a lot of similarities to the Galaxy Book Pros. It does have that studio mode, uh, the Smart Things app. It still has Galaxy Smart Switch. It still has second screen support. But it is also a bit worse in terms of processor options, so you have an i3 and an i5 version, I believe. The i3 version comes with UHD graphics, whereas the i5 does come with Iris XE graphics. And these are not Intel Evo processors, they're just regular 11th gen chips. But onto the best part about the base Galaxy Book, and that is ports. So this has way more ports than the Galaxy Book Pros. It's got two USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, a full-size HDMI port, a micro SD card slot, a headphone jack, and a Kensington lock. And finally, I wanna to touch on this one really quickly as Samsung didn't really spend much time talking about this one on stage, but that is the gaming-focused Galaxy Book Odyssey. It's not too ostentatiously gamery, I think. It's just one color, Mystic Black, and it's just, you know, a regular finish all around. I haven't really seen much gamery stuff going on with this one, but most of that stuff is happening on the inside. So we've got 11th gen H series Intel processors, an NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti GPU, up to 32 gigs of RAM, up to two terabytes of SSD, and it still supports Dolby Atmos. And it also offers an enhanced cooling system. So onto the ports, it's got, it's just got a slight leverage over the Galaxy Book. It's got two USB-C ports, three USB-A ports, one full-size HDMI port, a micro SD card slot, and a headphone jack. But the price, this is where everything changes. As for the regular Galaxy Book, I think that they mentioned in the event that it starts at 549. That is an extremely competitive price. Although it's not going to be the most powerful one. I think this is for the base spec with an i3 and UHD graphics. And I'd, I'd expect the i5 version to be maybe $700 US, by the way. As for the Galaxy Book Odyssey, I don't remember seeing a price for that because I think that's going to be available in August. For the Galaxy Book, the $550 one, that is available to order next month, I think. But anyways, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you are still here, thank you so much for making it until this point in the video. Let me know what your favorite Galaxy book that was announced was down in the comments below. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me.